Good morning, everyone. Uh, smashing to welcome you back this morning to our service, and especially to welcome the children and the young people and the leaders. Thank you for joining us this morning. Back to school. First time. Right, anyway. Wrong instead. How's that? Right, apologies. Don't know what's wrong with that microphone. Right. Anyway, welcome back. Great to see you this morning. And a many thanks to those uh, adults who helped with the young people over the summer holidays, because on Sundays, while we were in here worshiping God, then many of the youngsters were through in the upper halls having a fabulous time. So thank you so much to those who gave of their time to do that. It's much appreciated. We do have a news sheet this morning, so that updates you on pretty much most of what's happening just now and in the coming weeks. But there's just one or two things that I'd like to highlight. Um, first of all, um, a very sad announcement, and that is that Nettie Collins, who's one of our elderly members in our church, died on Friday at Highgate Nursing Home in Uddingston. So we give our sincere sympathy and the promise of our prayers to Jim, our son, to Meg Collins, our daughter-in-law, and to Scott, her grandson. Please do remember them in your prayers. I don't know when the funeral will be, but we will let you know as soon as I do. Uh, also, today is an all-age service, and so the youngsters and their families will stay with us throughout the service today. There will be times when you'll see people popping in and out, of course. Uh, you'll know why that is. But we'll not point at them and say when they come back in, we know where you've been. At the end of the service, there is tea and coffee through in the hall, and we do hope that you can join us for further fellowship and sharing in a cuppa. Now, I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Anne Brown, who's our Sunday School Coordinator, because we've got some very important things to do this morning. Good morning, boys and girls. It's lovely to have you back in church with us again in the sanctuary. I know a lot of you have been um, in church every Sunday, and you've been upstairs finding out about the miracles of Jesus. And so many miracles happened. And today we'll maybe be finding about other miracles as well that have happened. First of all, can I just say to the parents, it's lovely to have you with us as well. I know we're sitting in a few places. Um, if you've not filled in your registration form or not brought it, there's extras in the prayer room. And if you can fill them in before you leave today, that would help the administration greatly. Before the service starts proper, and as we've got all the boys and girls to, to today together, we would like to give our offerings away. Every Sunday, I know all of you bring your offerings to Sunday School, Fusion, the creche, and you're happy to give your money for God to use in wonderful ways. And today we're going to do this. We're going to give them away. Every year, we split our money to two charities, we always try to make it a children's charity. We try to make it a charity connected with our church in some way. And we always try to make one at home and one abroad. So that's what we're going to do now. But I need some help. And what I th who I thought I would ask to come out are all the children in the Sunday school who have moved in to primary one this year. I think there's nine of you. Your mummies will know who have moved from the beginners to the primary. If you can all come out here just now. I'll read your names in case you don't know. Callum Johnson, Ali Robertson, Cameron James, Rachel Robertson, Adam Patterson, Lewis Cameron, Lily Brown, Bethany Arbuckle, and Ailey Gilfellin. If you could all come out and stand in a row. Uh, 
that's it. We don't have them all here today, or maybe some of them don't want to come out. So that's okay, we won't force you, but we've got one, two, three, four, five big primary one children, and it's lovely to have you with us in the start of the Sunday School. Over the years, we have really given a lot of Sunday School money to lots of charities. We've had Robin House, Tear Fund, Rachel House, Kids Club Kampala, York Hill Hospital, the African Children's Choir, Cross Reach, the Vine Trust, Reality, and Lepra. And today, we are going to add two more names to that list. One of the names on the list will be added is Al Sharuk School for the Blind in Bethlehem. Now, I wonder, can you guess, is that our home or abroad charity? What do you think, Maya? It is, it's an abroad charity. It's in Bethlehem, and I know we know someone who was born in Bethlehem. Who was that? Who was born? Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that's right. And some of our money is winging its way to Bethlehem, to the al Sharuk School for the Blind. Now, the connection with our church is that we went on a pilgrimage, a group from our church, and we went to the al Sharuk for the Blind. And if you look at your screens, you'll see some of the pictures coming up now. The day that we visited, the young boys and girls were not in the school, and we only met the senior pupils who were moving on to university. But it was lovely to be there. We had a lovely time, and they welcomed us so warmly. There's the senior girls there in the screens now, and they were so good. They spoke to us, they recited poetry to us, and we had a wonderful, wonderful time with them. So, some of our money this year is going to the Al Sharuk School for the Blind. Our home charity is much nearer than that. It's not in Scotland, but it is in Britain. It's going down to England, and it's going to Newcastle Hospital, the Freeman New Newcastle Hospital, and it's going to the Children's Heart Unit Fund, and that's called CHUFF. And we are really chuffed today that we have got a little boy who has been treated at that hospital and made well again. Isn't that wonderful? And the connection with our church is his daddy came to Sunday school just like you and his uncles, his uncle, his uncle Andrew and his uncle Alan, and his grandpa and granny are part of our church family. It's the Devlins, and they're all sitting over here. And we are so happy that we have got Karen Devlin and Ewan Devlin and Drew Devlin, the little boy who's been made well again. And I'm going to ask them to come out as well and join us on the chancel. So if all three of you would like to come out, that would be good. Come out, honestly. We're really, really kind here. And the boys and girls are just like you, although you're not quite school age yet, but you soon will be. What's your name? Drew. You're Drew. And what age are you, Drew? Three. Drew's three. And Drew has come to get our check. But I wonder how much money. Karen and Ewan, it's lovely to have you with us today. Thank you for coming and bringing your lovely little boy with you. Thank you. I wonder how much money, boys and girls, you've managed to offer to God this session. Do you think it's, do you think it's one pound? It's a wee bit more than one pound you've brought. Do you think it's 10 pounds? Do you think it's 10 pounds? No. Do you think it's 100 pounds. No, it's not. It's more than 100 pounds. Derek is going to tell you now how much. Drum roll. Brum. Whoa. <laughs> Boys and girls, you have offered to God 1,100 pounds in your offerings every Sunday. 
little tiny things you've brought, like a pound or two pounds or 50 pence, but it's rolled into 11 hundred pounds and Mrs. Geddes has counted every penny of them so thank you Mrs. Geddes but we only give half to our abroad charity and half to our home charity so some of the bigger ones maybe what is half of 1100 anyone know 20 no it's a bit more than 20 who can half 1100 yes the boys down the front here 550 pounds so we are going to give 550 pounds just now to Karen and Ewan with our prayers and with our love that your little boy will continue to be healthy and strong and we've got the check here boys and girls would you like to hold this check and give it to Karen or Drew you can maybe give it to Drew here it is here children's heart unit 550 pounds children can you give this to and all stand around him and he'll hold it out <laughs> can you hold it right all the way up and let the boys and girls see it well done what a lot of pennies and well done boys and girls for handing it over unfortunately we can't fly over to Bethlehem, although I would love to go back again. So, Mrs. Geddes has made out this check also, and this check will make its way to Bethlehem. So now our Sunday school has got something very, very special happening in Bethlehem too. So, thank you. Just just before you go, we're going to dedicate our offering. So boys and girls, if you can close your eyes, clasp your hands, and we're going to say thank you to God for using this money. Can you do that too, Drew? That's a good boy. Well done. Heavenly Father, you are a great and gracious God. We ask you to take this money that we've given today in your name. Help to make it do wonderful, great things in Newcastle Hospital and in Bethlehem, helping boys and girls to be well again and helping blind children to see through Braille and large print and technology. We thank you for the boys and girls of the El St. Andrews Church Sunday School. Help to make them grow well and strong, learning about you week by week. Take care of them and look after all the boys and girls. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We really appreciate it. And thank you, Drew, for coming. Because many of us prayed for you in our congregation for such a long time, and we're really happy to see you here this morning. Thank you. And I think we have to say thank you to the mums and dads and the grannies and grandpas as well for the offerings. Either that or the boys and girls have had no pocket money for the last year. So thank you to everyone who contributed to these great sums of money. Now we're going to bring our worship to God as we sing our first hymn. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live.
Okay, now you will have seen right at the beginning of the service, perhaps, I put a slide on the screen, and my slides are not working presently, so whoever's, ah, they are now, thank you. Um, it gives us the theme for our service today, home, hands, and heart. And to start to get us into thinking about that, and one particular home, Kelsey Hume from our Fusion Bible class is going to come up and read us a few verses from a story in the Bible. Thank you, Kelsey. Bible reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Thank you, Kelsey. That was great. Nice and loud and clear. Thank you so much. So the story, the opening story, is about a home. There's a wee picture, if you like, of what it might have been like when Jesus visited the home of Mary and Martha. And you can also see a wee guy just inside the door. He's called Lazarus. He's their brother. But I want to show you some pictures, and I don't want you to shout out. I want you to put your hand up if you can tell me who lives in these homes. So here's the first one. Now remember, don't shout out. Put your hand up already, and the picture's not even up. <laughs> Bethany, you must be a prophetess. Amazing stuff. Who lives in this home. Let's see. Abigail, we'll come to you because you're nice near the front. It's an orphanage. It's what? I think it's an orphanage. It's the, an orphanage. An orphanage. <laughs> no, it's not an orphanage. Don't laugh now, don't laugh. It may well be that she's not seen a picture. It's not an orphanage, and the people who live there are definitely not orphans. Who can tell me who lives there? Right, Damien. A queen. Our queen. Yes, Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, and Prince Philip, and some of their family. Right, here's an easier one. Who can tell me who might live? Will you just advance it for me, Christine? Because for some reason it's not connecting on this. There it is. Right, come on then. We'll give you another shot, Abigail. A dog. A dog. And how appropriate that it is that you answered that question, Abigail. It's been a bit of a conversation going on around having dogs. In, uh, oh, I, I said plural in the weird household. Well, you know, you can't get one because it would feel lonely. No pressure. Yes. What's it called, that kind of house? Who knows what it's called? Come on then, Josh. A dog house. Or you should, you should really know that there's a special name for it coming from the family you come from. What's it called? Begins with a kicking kick. No? A kennel. A kennel. Hooray! Yes, a kennel. And then the next one. Now, that's a wee bit harder, isn't it? Who knows that? Can just about see AJ. Right, Alan? Igloo. An igloo. And who lives in an igloo? Who knows? Ian? Penguins. Penguins. <laughs> We're laughing at I guess that the penguins probably do go in there to hide away from the cold chill. Come on, Natalie. Who lives in an igloo? An Eskimo. An Eskimo or an Eskimo family. And sometimes they are called by another name. Is it Inuits? Yeah. Okie dokie. Thank you, thank you, tech master. Now, let's see if you know who lives in this place. I'll give you a clue. You can't really see up close, but the door has got a number on it, and it's the number 10. 
Let's see, Clara, can you tell the me? The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. And does anyone know, sorry, Scott, what the prime, new Prime Minister's name is? Who knows that? That's a harder question. <laughs> does anybody know, Callum? Do you know? The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, but what's her name? It's a lady. Come on, guys. Prime Minister's name? Oh, Rachel and Kayla. Well done. Well, Tarina, it's very close. Do you know Kayla? Teresa. Does anybody know a second name? Right, Lily, shout it out. I'm not going to get to you. Teresa May. Well done. Teresa May, the Prime Minister, lives at number 10, Downing Street. Now, here's one that you should be able to get. Any guesses? Samuel? A B. And it's very unlikely it's just one bee. I would think there'd be thousands of bees. That's a hive. That's a beehive. Absolutely. What about this one? Now, this is not in this country. It's further afield. So, let's see, Ewan. United President. Y the United President? Yeah. The United, the President of what? The United what? United States. Well done. The President of the United States. Now, here's a nice easy one. Anybody recognize that house? Who lives in that house? Derek. Who lives in that house, Adam? I live in that house. It's not my house. It's the church's house. But it's my home. I live in that. And it's just across the way. And then here's a final one to think about. Whose home is this? Whose home is this? Right, Bethany? You've had your hand up a few times. And the church? Yeah, the church. The church family have this as their home. But someone else who's very, very important. Look. No? A minister. A minister. Well, it might be. I seem to spend a lot of time here right enough. But I'm thinking of something else. God. God. Yeah. Actually, Jesus said in the Bible, that this was his father's house, that this is God's house. So we have to think of this as being one of the places that we meet God. So yeah, it's God's home. That's right. So well done. Today we're thinking about homes. We're thinking about Jesus coming into a particular home, the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. But we're also thinking that we're in God's home, we're in God's house, and we're here not just to meet each other, but we're here to meet God. And one of the reasons that we come to the church building, to God's house, is to say thank you to Him for all the lovely things that He gives us and does in our lives. So we're going to do that in our next song, which is, Thank You, Lord, for this fine day. And then there's a couple of kind of verses in it that talk about homes and schools and family and friends. We're thankful to God for all of these things. Let's stand and sing it together.
Okay, so we've been starting to think about this theme of home and hands and heart. And we've thought about different places that people live, right from the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, and his wife Michelle and their family, right down to somebody a lot less important like me. And then right up to God. And we talk about the church building being his home. But the home that was mentioned in the Bible reading that Kelsey read for us earlier on was the home of Martha and Mary, and also of Lazarus. The story tells us a wee bit about what's going on. Jesus comes to visit them. They're obviously really happy to see Him. And Jesus is happy to see them too, because actually, in the Bible, more than once it says that Jesus didn't have a home of His own. Mrs. Brown was mentioning Bethlehem earlier on. And of course, we know that when they went to Bethlehem, his parents, for him to be born, there was nowhere for him to be born. And he had to go to a very crude stable. So he was quite happy to have friends in all the communities he visited who would welcome him. And of course, things had to be done in the house. And the story tells us that the sister who did all the hard work was called Martha. There she is. She's running back and forward, back and forward to the kitchen. Can you see the oven in the background there? Probably making some lovely bread for Jesus to eat and for them to share a meal. But while she was doing all the running back and forward, Mary, her sister, was just sitting listening to Jesus. She wasn't helping with the work. So Martha got really cross. She thought, why are you not helping me? There's so much to do. We've got an important visitor. And she got very cross and pointed the finger at her sister. But Jesus said to Martha, Martha, what you're doing is important, but what Mary is doing is important also. And that's where the theme of hands and heart comes in. Because there's Martha running back and forward, using her hands to help Jesus to feel welcome. But Mary was sitting at his feet and listening with her heart. It's important, boys and girls, and adults too, that we do things for God, that we serve God. But you don't always have to be running about to serve God. It's not just about how you serve Him with your hands, but how you serve Him with your heart. So, the Bible teaches us that we should give every part of our lives to God. That might be our service, like Martha, using our hands, everything that we've got. Or it might be like Mary, just sitting quietly, praying and listening as best we can. We have to try and invite Jesus not only into our home, but into the things that we do, and also into our hearts. And we're going to do that by singing another song together. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, the men sing each verse twice, and the second time, the ladies do all that twiddly bit with the alleluias. And I'm sure that most of the ladies know, and if you don't, then you'll be able to follow those who do.
Now, one of the things that Mary was doing when she sat at the feet of Jesus was listening, but she was also responding with her heart. And we do that through singing, as we've just done, but sometimes we do it also in prayer. And so Scott Barry, who's another member of our Fusion Bible class, is going to come now, and he's going to lead us in a prayer. Do you have the piece of paper with you? He does. Look at that. Scott came well organized. Let us pray together. Thank you, Lord God, that you are so amazing and that you can be everywhere all at the same time. There are no limits to your incredible power. We welcome you into every single part of our lives, our homes, our schools, the places we go to have fun, friendships we make, the families of which we are part of, the activities we enjoy. We invite you into our hearts once more this morning and pray to you that we will make our home within us so that we may know your loving presence with us all the time, and wherever we may be. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. You're getting so tall that you hardly needed that step today. Wonderful. I want to show you one final slide. It's a verse from the Bible, from the last book of the Bible, and actually it's one that I quoted just last week, where Jesus says that He's standing at the door of our lives, and if anyone hears Him speaking to them and opens the door, that He will come in and eat with them and be with them. Now, Jesus, of course, lived a very long time ago. He died, but He came back to life, and we believe that He's with us here. We can't see Him, we can't touch Him, but by the Holy Spirit, He can come and live in our lives. So, when we open up our hearts and our lives to Him, He comes and lives in us. And I want to run past you a kind of idea which has already been kind of flagged up to you when you came in, which is that when you came in, you should have been given a heart. And some of you said, oh, I can wear my heart on my sleeve today. Well, you can, because you're in the house of God, and we meet with God here. And you know what I'm going to tell you? A number of times over the years, adults in particular have said to me that when they come to church, sometimes they feel a wee bit emotional. Sometimes they're very, very happy, because something really good is happening in their lives, and they want to give thanks to God. But sometimes they're very sad. And I know that there are some people here today who are sad about some of the things that have been happening in their lives just in the past week or so. And sometimes people even say to me after the service, oh, I'm really sorry. I was crying during that service. And I always say to them, why would you be sorry? Because when we come into God's house, then He sees right into our hearts. He sees what makes us happy, and He sees what makes us sad. And we can bring all of these things to God, knowing that He loves us. And that's one of the things that we do when we pray. We say, God, here we are. You know us so well. We want to bring to you the things that we're thankful for, that make us happy, we want to bring to you the things that we're sorry about and that make us sad. And so today you got a heart when you arrived, other than if you were one of the uh, families who were going to be in the area in the center and over here. I've got lots of hearts to give out to you if you haven't got one. And it's a symbol of bringing the things that you're happy about and the things that you're sad about to God. And I'm going to come among you while we sing our next song. And if you haven't got a heart, then I want you to stick your hand up so that I can give you a heart, because then I'm going to tell you what to do with it once we've finished the song. So this song is, Praise, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart.
Please take your seats. Right, has anybody not got a heart? Oh, there's a few in the choir. Don't know what that says about the choir. <laughs> Lovely. Now, we're going to take up the offering in just a moment, and here's what I want you to do. Now, this is really only for the children at the moment, because I've been asking Mrs. Brown, she'll hand out pens to the adults with children, and if you don't have a pen, adults with children, then let us know, because we've got a bundle of pens here still. The adults who are here without kids, you can think about this when you go away today. The hearts that I've given you have got two sides. On one side, if you just write a word or a few words of the things that make you happy, the things you want to say thank you to God for, okay? And on the other side, what is it that's making you sad just now? It might be something in your life, your family, your friends, uh, the bigger world. What makes you sad? What do you want to bring to God that could almost bring you to tears? As I say, the adults can maybe do this afterwards. The youngsters, with the help of your mums and dads, your grands, grandpas, your uh, leaders, aunties, uncles, the whole bit, if you can do that during the uptake of the offering. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is to take those away with you today and put them somewhere in your home that you're going to see it. Put it maybe on the door, go into your bedroom, or at the side of your bed, that kind of thing, just with a wee bit of blue tack or something. Get permission from your parents, of course, so that you don't wreck the decoration and blame the minister. Or in your car, if you're an adult, not if you're a kid. You know, you need to concentrate on the road if you're a kid. All oh, right, they don't get any better than that, sorry. But put it somewhere that you'll see it, and it'll remind you to say thank you to God for the happy things and to bring the sad things to Him and ask for His help and to ask Jesus to be with you in your heart, in your life. We're now going to take up the offering as some of the adults help the children with this.
Okay, now, I cut out every single one of these 400 hearts for today, and I don't have a great many left, so that shows you how many folks have got here today. Don't just chuck them in the bin, please, but use them in your worship to God in a personal way. Because in the stories of the Bible, not everyone was like Mary and Martha and Lazarus and welcomed Jesus into their home. Some people didn't like Jesus. They didn't like the things He said and did. I hope that's not us. We're here because we want to welcome Him into our homes, our hearts, and into the service that we offer with our hands. And as a sign of doing that, we brought our offering, and Debbie Bogle, one of our leaders in Fusion Bible class, is now going to come and lead us in a prayer. Thanks, Debbie. Let us pray together. Lord God, we are truly sorry that sometimes we squeeze you out of our very busy lives. We are sorry that at times our hands are busy doing things for you at the same time as our hearts are distracted and far from you. Please forgive us and help us to do better in the future. We pray that you will take your place now right at the very centre of our lives. We offer our hands and our hearts to you this day. We want to serve you and to live for you. Work through us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. And thank you to Kelsey and to Scott as well, who've taken part in the service today. Um, we very much appreciate your input. Now we're going to bring everything to a close as we sing our final hymn, Longing for Light, We, wake in, we Wait in Darkness. And the, the chorus of this song really focuses in on the theme for today, Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today.
as those who have been blessed by God, those into whose hearts the Holy Spirit has entered in Jesus' name, go now from this place to serve others with your hands, with your hearts, with your whole lives, that they may come to know His love also and be drawn closer to Him. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon and remain with each one of you and all whom you love now and forevermore. hearts and you'd like one, then just see me um, at the door and I'm happy to give you, give you one. Be conscious that there are lots of wee kids around in the sanctuary today and try to go warily, adults especially, as you leave the church. And also those who were involved in the photographs earlier on, presentation of the checks, can you wait behind so that we can make sure we've got a really nice photograph of that to send on to folks. <laughs> 